Longmire fans have gotten a huge update on the already ended series. If you didn't get a chance to see the hit western drama when it first aired on A&E and then went to Netflix, and you don't have a membership to watch it now, then you definitely need to watch this video. First, The Circle acquires Longmire. It has been reported that repeats of the hit modern western crime series, Longmire, will return to television. The channel Circle is an award-winning country music and lifestyle network, as well as the official television home of the Grand Ole Opry. The following six seasons of the program will be disclosed when they begin running on Circle on Tuesday, February 22nd at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Episodes will thereafter run daily at 6, 5 Central, with the exception of Tuesdays when they will air at 10, 9 Central and 1 a.m. 12 Central. Next, let's dive into the cast and plot. Longmire stars Robert Taylor as the sheriff of fictional Absaroka County, Wyoming, as well as Lou Diamond Phillips, Katie Sackoff, Cassidy Freeman, and Adam Bartley. After only three seasons, A&E stated that it will not renew the show after season three. Netflix then came in and bought it up for three more seasons, bringing the six-season run to a finish in 2017. Walt Longmire, the charming, committed, and unflappable sheriff of Absaroka County, is the focus of the program. Longmire, who has just been widowed for a year, is a guy in psychic repair who hides his anguish behind a brave facade and sarcastic humor. Longmire has been struggling after his wife's death, and at the prompting of his daughter Katie, he realizes that the moment has come to turn his life around. With the assistance of Vic, a female deputy fresh to the department, he is re-energized about his profession and commits to campaigning for re-election. Longmire feels betrayed when Branch, an ambitious young officer, chooses to run against him for sheriff, but he remains faithful in his commitment to the town. Longmire frequently seeks advice from close friend and confidant Henry Standing Bear as he works to repair both his personal and professional lives one step at a time. While readers of literature like ethically ambiguous heroes, Walt Longmire provides a welcome diversion. According to the author of the fan favorite character, Walt attempts to overcome personal difficulties in order to do the right thing. That's a commendable trait for any hero to possess. Longmire's persona and his experiences on the television show continue to garner good attention from fans. Next, let's talk about why Circle acquired the show. Circle Network Senior Vice President of Content, Evan Hyman, stated that acquiring Longmire is a target for the people at Circle, especially after their recent partnership with Dish, which allows them to reach many more small town markets across America. We have an audience of rural residents who will really resonate with the feel of this show, he said. He says this based on the fact that showrunners have often seen the popularity of series set in remote locations, such as Yellowstone, and therefore they believe Longmire will also appear to the same demographic. Drew Reifenberger, the general manager of Circle Network, stated that after two years of dealing with the pandemic, people are looking for new perspectives in the content they consume. Longmire is the ideal getaway for urban people who want to see freedom and wide landscapes in their television material after all of this time spent in lockdown and isolation. Now let's talk about the show's cancellation. When your favorite program is canceled, it is always heartbreaking, but nothing compares to having your favorite program canceled twice in a row. That's what happened to Longmire fans who watched the modern western based on Craig Johnson's best-selling books. The six-season series premiered on A&E in 2012, but was canceled after just three seasons. Netflix ultimately rescued it, making it one among the fortunate ones to escape death. But, like with all good things, there comes an end, and Longmire ended in 2017 after six seasons, following three extra seasons on Netflix. Next, there's been a drop in views. One of the biggest reasons a show gets canceled is that no one is watching it. That was not the case with Longmire. The show's second season averaged roughly 6 million viewers per episode on A&E, making it the network's most watched original series in history, and something of an anomaly in terms of original scripted cable television. However, by the time it was canceled, the show's ratings had plummeted. The season 3 finale, for example, drew only 3.7 million viewers and a 0.6 in the coveted demographic of adults aged 18 to 49. While the latter figure is a little underwhelming, the former is more than enough. In comparison, Mad Men's average viewership never went above 3 million, while Breaking Bad's first four seasons each averaged fewer than 2 million. It wasn't until the latter series debuted on Netflix that AMC's new seasons began to notice a rise in viewership. Even if Longmire's ratings have fallen over time, the show's cancellation by A&E was still rather shocking. According to Deadline, possible explanations for the network's decision to cancel the show after three seasons were that the show's audience skewed older, and advertisers prefer younger viewers, as well as the fact that it was produced by an outside studio, which meant it wasn't as profitable for the network. Now, why Netflix canceled it? While the cancellation was undoubtedly upsetting, it is possible to see how A&E arrived at their conclusion. The same cannot be true for Netflix, which does not rely on advertising revenue. It's also hard to determine what the show's ratings were, because Netflix doesn't provide that information. While there are independent firms that publish these figures, it's difficult to determine how accurate they are. As a result, we may never know if 
more or fewer individuals discovered Longmire as a result of its new location. However, there is reason to assume the former is correct, given the Netflix bump is a genuine phenomenon that has raised exposure and viewership for programs such as Breaking Bad and Riverdale over the years. So, could there be a spinoff? Taylor mentioned that there have been conversations regarding alternate films while discussing the last season of Longmire. He said back in 2017, during the talk, that there had been negotiations about possible spinoff films. There have been formal discussions about making some Longmire movies. I know that all of us would like to do that, he said, while speaking with Insider. There is currently no evidence that any Longmire resurrection or reboot television series or films are in the works. Tubi, NCTC, Dish, Peacock, Roku, Samsung TV+, Redbox, Vizio Smartcast, Zumo, and Friendly TV provide ad-supported streaming distribution for the network's rural lifestyle programs, bringing it to millions more through TVs, smartphones, and tablets. Opry Entertainment Group, a division of Ryman Hospitality Properties and Great Television, have partnered to form Circle. Next, Longmire may depart from Netflix soon. Longmire has departed Netflix in Canada and may be leaving Netflix in the United States as well. After Season 3, Netflix salvaged the program for three more seasons, which were published between 2015 and 2017. It's worth remembering that Netflix initially only rescued the show in the United States. Seasons 1 through 4 were released on Netflix Canada in March 2016, although the new seasons were released on the same day in the United States. Longmire has never aired outside of the United States and Canada. You might be startled to learn that a Netflix original program can depart the service, but this is becoming more prevalent. This also implies that programs like Lucifer and The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina may be leaving Netflix. The Killing is an excellent example of a show that may be compared to Longmire. Despite resurrecting and publishing the last season, Netflix was unable to keep the show going. It all boils down to the reality that Netflix does not control all of the show's rights. In the instance of Longmire, Warner Brothers Television licenses the show to Netflix, although exclusively for time being. Unfortunately, Netflix will not comment on long-term licensing for its programs, so for the time being, this is merely a heads-up that Longmire may leave the site. What has the cast been up to? Robert Taylor's next role was in the film The Meg, which was released after Longmire. In 2019, he participated in an episode of Dolly Parton's Heartstrings on Netflix, and in 2021, he will appear in an episode of the Australian television program The Newsreader. He also appeared in Into the Ashes and Blood Vessel in 2019. Katie Sackhoff appeared as Amunet Black in Season 4 of The Flash and has also voiced roles on Robot Chicken and Star Wars The Clone Wars. She previously starred in two episodes of Disney Plus's The Mandalorian and presently leads the cast of the Netflix sci-fi series Another Life, which returned for a second season in 2021. Graves, Criminal Minds, NCIS New Orleans, Goliath, and Blue Bloods have all featured Lou Diamond Phillips as a guest star. He also provided the voice of Victor Delgado in Disney's Elena of Avalor. He was most recently seen as a prominent cast member on Fox's two-season crime drama, Prodigal Son. Adam Bartley has appeared in episodes of American Housewife, Love, Death, and Robots, as well as The Magicians. In 2021, he appeared in episodes of Snowfall and Call Me Cat. And that's a wrap for this video. Are you excited to watch Longmire on the Circle? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this, and we'll see you in the next one.